Hi everyone, I'm Laura. And I'm Eva, and we are both family mediators who work as a team helping families through the process of divorce and separation. I have a background in mental health and a master's of laws in dispute resolution. And I'm a family lawyer. And we incorporate these additional backgrounds into the style of mediation we practice, which is called co-mediation. This podcast is called Love, Divorce, and Everything in Between. And this particular video shorts editions will be focusing on divorce and separation. Today we're going to be chatting about a question Laura and I get very often, which is, hey, we don't have any conflict. Why do we need the mediation process? So Laura, what do families who, you know, they don't have much conflict, they're pretty much on the same page about what they need in their separation divorce, why do they need mediation? Well, one of the, one of the most important things that mediation can offer families is information. And this is something often uh, misunderstood. So that you can get a lot of information during your mediation process. Um, and especially as it relates to drafting your separation agreement. So you can have a professional, a mediator helping you with information um, and also with drafting your separation agreement properly. And that's so important because a lot of the concepts are complex, right? Um, we're talking property division, we're talking spousal support, uh, custody. You want to make sure that if you have these major aspects in your separation and divorce, that you're uh, creating a resolution that is uh, following the requirements in the law so that you kind of protect yourself in the future. Also, too, you know, a lot of people don't realize that we do a lot of brainstorming um, in the mediation. So especially if uh, some parents haven't thought about, you know, certain aspects of their post-separation life, we can remind them of that, bring them up and come up with brainstorming so that you can, you can re find a resolution very quickly. And if you have no conflict, that's amazing. Um, Eva says that's all, this all the time, and I'm, going, I'm, I'm just going to say it instead yeah. of her. Uh, we're not in the business of creating conflict, so no mediator is actually in the business of creating conflict. So if you don't have any, then that's great. However, you can still use the mediation process to alleviate some of the concerns. If, you know, if there are any concerns or fears, uh, if you have children, for example, uh, as it relates surrounding parental arrangements, schedules, um, um, special needs, uh, special requests, all of those stuff could be alleviated and discussed in the mediation process. That's absolutely correct. And often a lot of people don't realize that the mediation process can include other professionals if needed. So for example, sometimes we have clients who are going to be joining in the workplace again. And so they need help or assistance with finding a job or um, you know, financial uh, advice or having a real estate uh, agent come in or property evaluator or child psychologist. The mediation process can include um, really a holistic service so that you're not doing it piecemeal, but instead kind of getting everything done together. In the end, having all of this done together and so using the mediation without having conflict, obviously it's going to make it much easier and it's going to prevent future conflicts. So if you have no conflicts today, that's great. It's most important then at this point to get your agreements done properly so you can avoid creating future conflict. I'm Eva. I'm Laura. <laughs>